Everybody go! Everybody say Everybody, see what you've done for me. See how you changed my story. You are. Jehovah, 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 Jehov
ladies, this is my God. I don't know, ladies. Where are the men? 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 Let's get them down, body go. Today is, the, today is the last day. We're going to dance before our Father, our Maker, and our God. Thanking Him for all He has done. Do we have a white handkerchief in the house? If you have your white handkerchief, lift it up. When I they count all the good, what God they do for my life? I want. They count all the good where God they do for my life. I say, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, let it let me. I don't want to be cut off. Robo is a car, where could we be? I can feel the energy this time. Let me come this way. Robo is a car work with me. Toronto work with me. GTA work with me. Canada work with me. Let's go to Calabar. Calabar, Calabar. Oh, yeah. Abasi, ya, 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 oh. Ay, ya, ya, oh. Abasi, ya, 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 oh. Ay, ya, ya. Everybody. My God is so good. He's so good. My God is so good. He's so excellent. Let me hear those. My God is so good. He's so good. My God is so good. He's so excellent. My God is so good. My God is so good. He's so excellent. My God is so good. He's so good. My God is so good. He's so excellent. We do it today. Everybody go.
are we doing today, everybody? To you, 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 to to you, to you, Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. We thank you, Lord, for everything. Everybody sing, thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Somebody shout a loud hallelujah. Somebody shout a loud hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Are you excited for a testimony this evening? Are you expecting something from God this evening? This is the last night. I don't know about you, but you should be expectant. Praise Master Jesus. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. And if there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. The God that blesses men. Hallelujah. It's time for announcements. Praise God. Please, good news. We'd like to... Hallelujah. If you are in Ontario, we'd like to tell you and invite you to... In Ontario... And the first branch we have, by the special grace of God, in Ontario we have Omega Fire Ministries, Toronto One. I don't know if you are clapping for your landlord or you are clapping for your neighbor. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the address is 1181 Finch Avenue West, Unit 18. North York, Ontario, Canada. So if you are in the vicinity or you have anyone there, please tell them to tell them to tell someone to tell someone to come to church and experience God like never before. And this branch is headed by none other than our national pastor, Pastor Josiah Irene. Can you jump your hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. So please. If you're around 1181 Finch Avenue West, Unit 18, pay us a visit and God will do something for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second branch we have is Omega Fire Ministries Edmonton and is at Fairfield Inn and Suits by Marriott, North Canada. Praise God. So if you find yourself in Edmonton, please pay us a visit and God will visit you. Hallelujah. And this branch is headed by none other than Pastor Joseph Shibute, the one on the microphone now. 
Hallelujah. I don't know if you are clapping for the keyboardist. Can you clap your hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Our third branch is in Omega Fire Ministries, Montreal. So if you are in Montreal, you find yourself at 281 Queenland Street. La Salle. Or La Salle. Thank you. God bless you. If you, are, if, you, if you find yourself in that vicinity, please pay us a visit and God will bless you. And this branch is headed by none other than Pastor David Edegwe. Can you jam your hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. The other branch we have is branch four in Omega Fire Ministries, Ottawa. Is it Ottawa? Oh. Hallelujah. So if you find yourself in Ottawa, the address of the church is at 91950 Bank Street, Ottawa. Hallelujah. 1950 Bank Street, Ottawa, Ontario. And it's headed by none other than Pastor Nobet Ayomoba. Clap your hands for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. And the second branch here in Ontario, in Toronto, it's Omega Fire Ministries Toronto Branch 2. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I see that the members are here. God bless you. The address is at 994 Kehar or Kenha Drive, Unit 38, North York. 94 Kenha Drive, Unit 38, North York. If you find yourself in that vicinity, please do well to visit them and God will bless you. And the person there is none other than Pastor Fabo Ikechukyu. Can you clap your hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. And the final branch we have is in Calgary. Hallelujah. Omega Fire Ministries, Calgary. The address is at Randall Community Association Center, 2409 50, 50th Street, Northeast, Calgary, Alberta. And if you find yourself there, please do well to visit us. And the person there is none other than Pastor Ifi and Dr. Chika Daniels. Jump your hands together for Jesus for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, if you find yourself in those vicinities, do well to visit us and God will bless you. Hallelujah. Jump your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I hope you're having a good time. God is in church. I say God is in church. You know, when we are growing up, especially when your mother cooked a pot of rice, after you have finished everything, the bottom pot. That one, I like the rice you put stew and turn. While you are one minute. No, the bottom dries up. When you scoop it, so you Very, very sweet. Tonight is the bottom pot. If your challenge escape the first day morning, the first day evening, the second day morning, it will not escape this night. Yeah. I say it will not escape this night. Yeah. Look at your neighbor, eyeball to eyeball, and say confidently, tonight is my night. You see your sister in the confidently. Tonight is my night. I see God smiling on somebody. Tonight I see God smiling on somebody. And the person looks like you. If you are the one, shout fire. 
Shout fire. Shout fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, mega fire ministry. Fire is our password. Once you shout fire, the devil take, <laughs> disappears. Amen. Before we take the offering, we just pray one prayer. We're supposed to be a series, but I will just take one. In Luke chapter 4, verse 17, the Jesus says, And he opened the book. But in verse 20 of that same Luke chapter 4, it says, And he closed the book. In life, you are either opening or closing a book. Every man has a book. And something is written in the book. If your book is not open, it will not be read. And if it is not read, it will not be interpreted. And if it's not interpreted, it will not be implemented. You are going to talk to God tonight. In this service, Father, open my book. Is somebody ready to pray? Stand up on your feet. Say, my father, my father. I can hear you, my father, my father. As I begin to pray, in the name of Jesus, in this meeting tonight, oh God, open my book. Open my book by fire, by fire, by fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Open your mouth and talk to him. Bacanta libra gadoza. Rente le bede gede yakato. Le kente libra gadoza. Rente le gede de le kento libra gadoza. Rata ta ta. Le kanto le brente le gede yata. Rata ta 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 yakato. Lo bonzia. Ere gede de de kata atu yata. Rente le bede gede yakato. Lo ponto lo berondi yata. Oh Lord, open my book. Kata. Aya tele gede ya ento libre gede ya berente teke ba ya ekente libre gede ya let my book be open aragadiata let it be read let it be interpreted let it be implemented kanta ya ereke bata para ekente libre gede ya rente le brege gede ya atana ba ke ya ta rata la ba gade le kento rente keke ba kate le kento libre ya. Eriada da badaya katosa la gadosa rende gede ya kato entete reke le brege de ya kata ya gadosi yata in the name of Jesus that amen is hanging on one leg the person with the loudest amen you will take the first miracle tonight if you are in the house shot fire. Shout fire! Wave your hand and shout fire! Shake your leg and shout fire! Turn around and shout fire! Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah! You want to put your hand into your pocket? Riba mama masa sala tapi ada dapat madosia dapat dalam bahasa tua. Li 
receive the restorer, he will restore you. No matter how you are broken, he will restore you.
Hallelujah. Can you celebrate Jesus with a clap offering? Please ask you are clapping. Let's receive the ministry of Jimmy the Summit. Amen. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you just wave your hands to heaven? Just wave those hands. Somebody wave your hands to Jesus. Bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Somebody bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Bless his name, bless his name. Would you jump on your feet, somebody? Can you jump on your feet? Raise your hand up. Jump on your feet, raise your hand. Release your praise in this atmosphere. Release your praise in this atmosphere. Tonight is the last night. Release your praise. Release your praise. Heaven wants to hear your voice. Can you release your praise? Zika papalia mos. Ratata manakoba la ki palakaria. Eva la ki manakoba la gadesha. Es sana na manakoba lianos. Erika palakano pelagadusa. Release your praise, somebody. Grace is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. Let your praise rise. Let your praise rise. Lift your hands, somebody, open your mouth up. Release your praise. Release your praise. Sana bibili kumana manakos. Orana manakomana. Yena na titi kumana te manakomela. Oramana maneva na jibili koda. Orana mede kopaya. Esiana manakora. Let your praise rise. Let your praise rise. Let your praise rise. Let your praise rise. Child of God, this is Zion. This is Zion. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be holiness. There shall be deliverance. The sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. Each of them that appeared before God in Zion. Raise your praise. Raise your praise. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. Araka, Araka. My death 
to pay from the cross to the grave Asha from the grave to the sky oh I Lord I leave your name on high lift those hands lift those hands you came from heaven to earth to show the way come on up woman from the earth to the cross oh my dead have to pay from the cross to the grave Hara. from the grave to the sky Lord I leave your name on high for our generation shall praise your name our generation Aya. Shall praise your own name. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your own name. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is here. Hey, you are the miracle walking God. Araka Pakada. Your name is here. My God, my God. Your tonight is your night. I don't care how you came. I don't care what came with you. But tonight is your night. Somebody lift your hand, shot fire. I can't let you shot fire. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Hey, you are the miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Hey, you are the Destiny changing God, your name is Yah. Oh, Rakamanakana, your name is Yah. Lift your voice, your name is Yah. You are the miracle walking God, your name is Yah. Hey, oh, yeah, why is it? Nimosia, Nama. You are the living God. There's no more. Hey, oh, yeah, why? Yes, it's a little bit. You are the living God. Hey, you are the living God. Hey, yes, everybody say. Eku ebe, eku ebe, eku ebe, eku ebe. You are the living God. Yes, everyone, lift your voice, say, eku ebe, eku ebe. They talk and do God. You've got fire in your eyes. Yes, Shaka Bagada. Nothing hides from you. You see everything. Let me hear you. Even that deep a secret of expose. Consume. You are the all consuming fire. Oh, Arakabara. Come and manifest. You got fire in your eyes. Nothing hides from you. Aya, you see everything. 
Qui me n'est dit pas ce que l'on met Si esposa est Arakara Consume every weakness You are the all Consuming fire Come and manifest Say Consuming fire
your grace is all that I see To be more like you, just like you, Holy Ghost Your grace is all that I see To be more like you oh, Just like you Holy Give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. How's the song written and presented by our father and mother in the Lord, the restoration apostle, and our dynamic mother? Let's celebrate God for this beautiful choir. Wonderful. Somebody shall testify. Let's make welcome Pastor Chau. Joa Baptista for his testimony. Welcome Sister Fabiola Takao for her testimony. Sister Fabiola, please. There's Samuel Jolly for Momo Lawa. Mr. Samuel Jolly for Momo Lawa. Please can you come? Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? God bless you. Pastor Jawu Baptista is here to give God all the glory. Come. How long were you out of your job? Okay, so two weeks ago, you heard Pastor Richie making reference to a testimony why he was ministering or talking. Two weeks ago, he was sent out of his job. And then he came to this conference and in the course of this morning, as the ritual was on the act of oppression as the spirit led him and he came out to be a part of what God is doing in the outreach ministry of our father and by the reason of his covenant connection I said it was true as he went back to his seat 50 minutes later he got a message on his phone that his job has been restored that he should come back and resume somebody shall testify Congratulations. Yeah, the message is confirmed on his phone. That's what it's telling me. Let's give God praise. <laughs> Sister Fabiola Takao is thanking God for an encounter that better her destiny. She said in 2018, before then, she was for a long while waiting for a document for a journey. But it did never happen. So in 2018, she moved from Cameroon and went to where God was, Auchi, the headquarters of this great commission. He said he went to Auchi, and in the course of her visit to Auchi, Papa located her by prophecy and spoke specifically consigning her matter. She said after that encounter, she returned back to Cameroon, and a week later, that which she has waited for for a long time came to pass. A document came and July of that same 2018, that was what brought her to Canada and today she's here to the glory of God. Is that how we celebrate Jesus here? God bless you. Brother Samuel Jolly is here to give God all the glory on behalf of his friend. His friend was supposed to be here, but by the reason of what God did, he was unable to come. His friend is Momo Lawal. He said, the friend insisted that he must share the testimony on his behalf. He said he was accused of sexual 
abuse or sexual something. And by the reason of that accusation that year, which year? Okay, his family that were bid to come, they were denied. They could not come. And himself was out of job. It was bad that life became terrible for him. And then he said, was it the last, the last program Papa was here, he connected that Papa spoke specifically concerning this case. And he said that by the reason of that encounter, about a week or two weeks ago, he just got judgment in his favor. <laughs> that the court has nullified all the matter, and by the reason of that, now he has multiple job interviews he had to attend to, and that's why he's unable to be here this time. Can we give God the glory for this wonderful day? Hallelujah. By the grace of God. You know, you know, you know, wait. Hallelujah. Who is a father of nation? Father of nation is one who cuts his cake in all nations. Not by force. Nobody scores, but nations will definitely want to play their part. So this birthday is still continuing. Praise God. Let's receive to the king's stand our father.
Let's welcome the sons and the daughters of the prophet. Quickly, sons of the prophet. God bless you. You never disappoint me. You then blow my mind, oh. Supernatural God, oh kaka, oh kaka, oh kaka, but this upward me, you they blow my mind, oh, supernatural. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap offering. <laughs> I've had to cut so many cake, but only eating a few. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you for what you've been doing and what you're set to do. Throw your weight around and prove to the devil that you are still the master. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands and be seated. Amen. How many of us can maybe by reason of the word of God you've heard in the past and the last three meetings or the manifestations of the power of God you've seen, how many of you for the past three meetings your faith has just been strengthened? And you're honest about it, your faith has just been strengthened, your, your heart has been built up. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate all our pastors here. I appreciate all um, the ministers of God in the crowd. I appreciate our father, Papa Mom. Thank you, sir, for being here today. Amen. Man's been preaching for over 50 years and still strong. You know what it means to be over 70 and you are bouncing and still strong. It's the grace of God. Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Amen. All right. First Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, which was repeated in Acts 13, 22. For Samuel. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be a captain over his people because thou hast not kept the statute, thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And they repeated the same thing in Acts 13.22 that David is a man after his own heart. Davidic secrets of greatness. Davidic secrets of greatness. Greatness as secrets. Life as a key. Every door as a key. A keyless door is a useless door. A door without a key is a door that's of no use. So for everyone who wants to assess greatness, genuine kingdom, true greatness, there are tenants and there are components and there are keys. Looking at David and Saul, who should God call a man after his heart? Everything about David was wrong. It was everything about David was wrong, was wrong. David was a man, when you look at his life, you will see a lot of battles. And that was why Solomon, his son, in 1 Kings chapter 5, from verse 1, Solomon embarrassed his father publicly. Solomon said, my father David could not build a house. He was a king that could not build God a house. And Solomon began to espouse and explain why David, his father, could not be the house. He said, because of many wars. I'm writing a book 
on the 21 wars of David. 21 confrontations and battles of David. The first battle of David was the battle of rejection. David was rejected by family. Rejected by friends. Rejected by his own father. When, when Samuel came to anoint a king, all the sons of Jesse were home. Everyone was at home. And David was sent way into the bush, to the wilderness, to take care of animals. That's the height of rejection. Family rejection. Family rejection. David was not at home. And the Bible says that he was rejected. And the Samuel said that is this everyone, is there anyone still left in your house? He was rejected. The second battle of David was David was always paid evil for good. There was a man in 1 Samuel chapter 25. That man's name was Nabal. 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 The Bible says Nabal was going through a confrontation and a battle in his life. As Nabal was going through this, he had herds, he had donkeys, he had cattle, he had animals. And because of what he was going through, everything was scattered so what happened david nurtured took care of his flocks took care of his animals took care of his donkeys took care of his herds took care of everything and he took care of it whilst the man was going through what he was going through after a couple of months and years david brought everything back to the man without taking a thing from it and gave it back to the man now it was david's term david was going through a crisis david was going through a challenge in his life david sent 10 Man, he said, Go to Nabal and tell Nabal to remember how I took care of his flocks, took care of his herds, took care of everything that he kept in my possession. I did not take a thing. He said, Tell him to at least favor me. As the ten men came and met Nabal, they said, Remember what King David did for you. And Nabal asked them, Who is David? He said, Who is David? He said, David the king, he said, he said, some men break away today from their boss and call themselves king. This was someone, and David was wrought. David was angry when the servants came. David said, okay, let me tell this man that I am nice, I am kind, but I am brutal. He said, you are going to go there, waste everything, waste the animals, waste the man, waste the household. As soon as the wife, Abigail, heard it, the Bible says, she saddled an ass and came to David, First Samuel 25, 25, and said to David, he said, my, my husband's name is Nabal. Nabal is his name and foolishness is with him. He said, I was not there when this happened. If I was there, this would not have happened. I know it's in thy power to kill. It's, thy, <laughs> it's in thy power to make alive. Please spare my husband. David kept quiet, but David marked her. David, David. They said, this kind of wife that can pacify a king is an asset. Do you know, sir? I want to say something. And I said to someone some days ago, I said, I suddenly discover it's not enough to pray for a helpmate. Because Eve was a helpmate. But Adam's destiny crashed. Pray for an asset. Not just a helpmate. An asset. Am I talking to somebody here? So David was spared evil. Look at the life of David. The third war of David was internal crisis, family battles, battles in the family, internal wranglings, internal battles. Absalom rose against him. Adonijah rose against him. Ahitophel rose against him. Internal wranglings, internal battles, internal wranglings, internal battles, internal battles. The fourth war of David, and I'll stop. There's actually 21 wars, but I'll give you four. If I give you everything, you won't buy the book. The fourth word of David, which, I, which is almost uh, uh, has a semblance to what we go through, is the war of liabilities. When David became king, every member of David's family came to his house. David had a massive complex. 
in the palace, not his personal building, the palace, stayed around the palace. David had 600 families he catered for. 600, not 600 people, sir. 600 families, he determined what they ate, what they wore. 600, no wonder he couldn't build a house. He stayed in the palace. There are so many of you. You live from paycheck to paycheck because before money comes, there are people like like sharks, like vampires, looking for what to draw and extract. Labor to labor. The Bible said this man had so much. Do you know what David did? He became wise. If you check your study your Bible in First Samuel chapter twenty one, chapter twenty two, verse one, both of them. The Bible said they came on David, and David looked. He said, "What am I going to do?" He empowered thirty of them. And those 30 became the mighty men of David. Am I speaking to somebody right now? There are people with so much love, so much battles, there's so much demand on your life. David went through so much battles, went through so much demand, and God helped him. The Bible said, God said concerning David, the same prophet that anointed David, anointed Saul. Same prophet. Saul. What was Saul's problem? What was his problem? God said to Saul, destroy Amalek. Destroy Amalek. Because I have a mandate to waste them from generation to generation. Waste them. Destroy them. Saul entered into that mission. Did what God said. God said, waste everything in sight. Saul saw animals. He saw wealth. And Saul felt that this was an investment. Why do you waste gold? Why do you waste silver? He spared it and spared King Haggag. That was his offense. And God said, I've taken the kingdom from you. Ah, ah. To me, that was pardonable. But David! <laughs> David was so terrible. So terrible. David did several things which we could call abomination. Not abomination, abomin country. Abomin continent. <laughs> David took a man's wife, got her pregnant. In fact, Sir David was in the palace. And the Bible said from the rooftop, he saw Bathsheba taking her. But how? How does your eye travel from your building? cross into goes over several roofs at night and see a woman even Bathsheba was suspicious what kind of woman takes a bath and opens the door and he saw that and the bible said he messed up killed the husband the man was carrying his own death sentence wasted the man and God says a man after my heart how you see this God there? Eh? Let me tell you something about God. Don't tell him. He is God by himself. He is God. When, Ab when Abinadab, Shammah came, God said to someone, don't annoy them. He said, don't look at their countenance. Ignore their countenance. Look away from their countenance. I have not chosen them. When David came, the Bible says it was of a beautiful countenance. God said, I've chosen him. How now? Concerning Shammah, God says, look away from their countenance. I have rejected them. For David, he said, it's of a beautiful countenance. I have chosen him. It is about countenance. You just rejected one on that basis. He is God by himself. God is God by himself. He wasn't elected, it can't be impeached. It's God by himself. The Bible says he laid the beams of his chambers on the waters. He walked upon the wing of the wind as a chariot. He stretched for the heavens as a curtain. He created barrier between the water and land. And said water should not return to land. He's the monarch of the universe. The Bible says he covered himself with light as with a garment. He's my bridge over troubled waters. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. Take 
your seat. So when Saul messed up and made a mistake, God picked David. Listen to this. Write this down. If you mess up, God has a backup. There is something you were, you were called, created by God to fulfill. There's a mandate on your life. There's an assignment over your head. You are called by God. You are created and you are sent to this world because you are needed. And since you are needed, you can't be wasted. You are too expensive to be expended. You are too important to be impotent. There's an agenda of God for your life. Listen, I want you to be intentional. Carry this mentality that God sent you here on a mission. You have a mandate on your head. You have an assignment. There is something I do around the world. How many of you have a phone? You have a mobile phone. You have a mobile phone. You have a mobile a handset. Can I can I see your hand? You have a mobile phone. Okay. How many of you bought your mobile phone? Of course, obviously. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new. You got it brand new. Obviously. You bought it brand new. Okay. How many of you were the first to use that phone? You just lied. You lied now. You lied. You were not the first to use your phone. Yeah. You opened the pack, but you're not the first to use your phone. Yes. The company that manufactured that phone, sir, they tested it. They browsed with it. They put in Wi-Fi. They put in a SIM. They did everything. And when they could confirm that it works, they put a warranty. To say, we have tested this, it worked. But what did they do? They wiped out everything. Dismembered it. Took off the battery. Took off the keypad. Took off everything. And put it in the pack. But first, they confirmed it was working. That's how you are configured. Before you came physically, God confirmed. Listen to this. Listen. God confirmed that you fulfilled a destiny. That is why he said, while you were in your mother's womb, before I formed thee, I knew thee. Before, before, before I formed thee, I knew thee. And I ordained thee as a prophet. So in the realms of the spirit, God already confirmed you are successful. God already confirmed you are great. God already confirmed you are untouchable before he brought you to this world. So what is the plan of God? What is the plan of God? What is destiny? Discovering God's intentional purpose before your predestination. Discovering God's authentic purpose before your predestination. So there is something you were wired to do. There is something you were created to perform. There is something you were configured to become. And I stand in agreement with your faith that that which God has said you will be, you will be. You will be. You will be. Why did God call David? What was David's secret of greatness? Number one, the first Davidic secret of greatness, sir, was a good heart. See what God said in First Samuel 16, verse 7. He said, I don't see as men see. Man looks outwardly, but I look at the heart. Man looks outwardly. But I look at the... Are you, are, you, are you seeing that? There will be four wonders in heaven. The first wonder, when we get to heaven, the first wonder is going to be the absence of those we thought to be present. All the personal assistant to Jesus. Jesus secretary. Jesus PA. There are people that, that, that we are with Moses. When God gave you the Ten Commandments. People we thought would be there. Absent. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. That would be the first one. Absence of those. Today holiness and righteousness has become being prim and proper. Righteousness and holiness. If I'm not holiness is a dress code. Not more a lifestyle. If you must be seen as holy, you must have your earrings off. You must have certain things off. Some time ago, there was somebody who came up in, 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 in Africa and said she died. I went to wherever she went to, a Sierra Leonean. And everybody was calling names. He called my own. He said, God said, more grace to me. Which God? 
He said, Papa Deboye was a sinner. Pastor Chris was a sinner. Pastor Kumi was wrong. When he got to me, he said, God said, I'm doing the right thing. Ah, so Adeboye is pure. He's not pure. Me, I'm pure. I said, you are a liar. Me with all my stubbornness. God said, I'm okay. I said, this person is lying. Because I know myself. No. God, God must put a comma. Because I'm, me, I know I'm stubborn. Me, no. All these great men that have worked with God for a long time, all of them have found one thing. Then me with my stop, because at that period, ah, I was an activist. You hit me, I hit you. You talk, I reply you. <laughs> for every bus, there's a corresponding boss. <laughs> so now people are wanting to say, why is it now? I've been refined. <laughs> Something's happened now. I don't even have energy. I just look at them. You see, there's something about working with the Holy Spirit. There are some things He downplays before you. As you grow, there are things you just you start to ignore. There are things I, I don't have energy to. I just want to work with God. So when she said that, sir, this lady entered the system, targeted a man. All the great people around the man's ministry, she began to see prophecies for them. You, you are evil. You are this. All the man's strong men pull them out. Today she married the man. She said, God said this. I came out. I fired her. I said, You actually died and went somewhere, but you went to hell. Because the Bible speaking said, When God was talking to Abraham to, La to Lazarus, He said, No one comes here and goes back. I believe scriptures. For everyone who has come here, you can't go back. I said, God does not embarrass his servants publicly. It's not in the character of God to embarrass his servants publicly. I can show you from scriptures. I said, this thing you saw is of the day. I blasted that. She now came back. I said, God said that thing he said about me before. He didn't say it again. <laughs> God said concerning me that I'm doing my own thing. He didn't send me. I said, hey, it's now you are talking. I said, this is your God that I can just shake a bit and he changed his mind. It's not God. <laughs> I said, I just poke you a bit and you already seen another thing. I said, you see, I made a mockery. I made a mockery of everything about her. Am I communicating now? But as soon as, what I'm picking up now, as soon as this fellow died, claimed to have died or whatever, and came back, the first thing she said, God said, remove your earrings. Uh -uh. God said, you must wear this. Holiness is not a dress code. Because there are people without, without makeup, without gadget, without earrings, but their heart is filled with evil. There are people you see, they don't put on kinds of things, but malice, 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 pride, arrogance. The things that actually take people to hell are the sins of the spirit. Am I talking to somebody here? That means when you see someone like Ketil Kuma, you won't call her a woman of God because she had dangling earrings and all of that. If you see someone like Ami Sempo Mafasin, you won't call her a woman of God. You is someone like Maria Woodward Etta, you won't call her a woman of God because you are the mentality of what you think holiness is. God says it's the heart. God says, I look at the heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4 23. For out of it are the issues of life. God knows the value of the heart. God knows the importance of the heart. No wonder Jesus said in the John 14 verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. You must tell God, circumcise my heart. Purify my heart. He said, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart. You must cry to the God of heaven. You must understand your inability to control your heart is what makes you a ridicule in life. He says in Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can know the heart. It takes you surrendering to God and aligning with scriptures. I'm talking about the heart. If you want to walk with God, you must guard your heart. I beg you, it's not every information you must allow in your spirit. No, there are things you shouldn't read. There are things you shouldn't see. There are some stories you must not hear. Am I communicating here? Have you stayed around? Maybe you stayed around the place where they play loud music. Maybe around, around the club. And you're here. Not, not, not this. There. There's so much. 
restrictions and order in this country. You know, this is your country. The West, the West is so orderly. <laughs> we are driving. We are, was it yesterday we are driving? Everyone was in, was in order. I said, Kai. I said, I miss lawlessness. <laughs> Everybody just driving in order. I see when our country you overtake somebody. <laughs> you know, we're driving and we just drove in front of a guy and the guy waited. We said, ah, in Lagos, how? How? The way you got my for, for that thing alone, there'll be traffic. <laughs> Am I communicating right now? So I saw that and I'm like, oh wow, do you know somebody? There are things you allow in your spirit, sir. It pollutes. Pollutes your heart. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest, if there be any vet, you think on these things. Think on these things. We must begin to guard our heart. Whatever does not edify, defies. Whatever does not build up destroys. Someone said to me, Give us some secrets. Or oh, now you have been able to stand with so much courage despite all that's happened to you. And you are preaching and growing and getting younger. How? I said, 90% of the junk said about me. I don't read them. People read on my behalf. Now, somebody said, You are stupid. You are not reading it. How does that help you? Eh? For example, I look at this man. And I say, you are mad. He's well suited. With a nice black suit and a red tie. You are crazy. You are mad. He said, hey, he now takes off his suit. I said, didn't I say he's mad? <laughs> he has confirmed it. I said, you are mad. And he's silent. You are crazy. And he's silent. So who's mad between? The one who's screaming. Are you what I'm talking about? There are certain things that have happened in our life. You see, as you grow in life, you begin to understand life better. There are things you just ignore. You don't process. When I see daddy and mommy, I see the husband, I see the way they live. There are certain truths I've understood about life. I ah, know. See, eh, women are the easiest to counsel. In those days, I used to be angry. But women, they are the easiest to counsel. They will talk and talk and talk the solution to their problem. I don't stress myself. I love you. See that, Pastor? Can you imagine what happened? Imagine the, the, the way my husband behaved. Well, I just know what I'll be doing. I will just focus on my God. I said that's the answer. Next person. Next person. They will <laughs> talk and talk until they talk the answer to their own problem. So I listen to them. They must give you the answer to their problems. So I don't. I don't bother to when they. 20, 20, uh, five minutes I'm done. Say, Papa, you have seen all of that. I say, men are too complicated. Men are complicated. But if you understand how to operate with them, you'll be fine. And that is why you must pray for God to give you one that he has ordained for you. Having a God-ordained partner. When you have someone God has ordained for you, is a prayer partner. The one that God has not ordained for you is a prayer point. Your heart determines your height. Have a good heart. There are two or three things that determines the state or a, the heart of a man. Number one is you are not offended in God. A good heart is never offended in God. Even if you pray, you don't see answers. God is still God. Even if you are pregnant, you had a miscarriage, and that child was a prophetic child, God is still God. There are so many people who are angry at God. In Matthew 11 verse 6, he said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. In Psalm 119 verse 165, he said, and they shall not be offended in me. Refuse to be offended in God. God's plan is the best. He said, I know the thought that I think towards you. The thought of peace and good and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Whether there is money or there is no money. Whether there is marriage or there is no marriage. Whether I lose all my friends, 
God is still God. It is too late to turn my back. I have gone too far to give up now. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. God is God. He sits on the throne. He has kept me. Even if he does nothing for me, he has done more than enough. I refuse to be offended with God. He says, I know my Redeemer liveth. Though in this flesh one destroy me, but in my heart I will see God. I don't care what I go through. I don't care how people turn their backs on me. Even my friends walk away. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, rise up against me to eat up my flesh. He said, though war rise against me, my heart shall not fear. Though an army comes up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing about the desire of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. It doesn't matter what I go through. I am not moved by what I see. I walk by faith and not by sight. No matter the gang up or the conspiracy, God is still God. I will never be offended in God. Let me tell somebody, don't be offended in God. Don't be offended. David, take your seat. Sir, that is how David fell into sin. And the child of sin was sick. David was fasting. And prayed for the child to be well. The child died. After the child died, he cleaned up his face. And he was moving about normal. The servants were confused. The child was sick. You were weeping. Now the child is dead. You should even be groaning. He said, the Lord has done what pleases him. God said, this one is a man after my heart. Many are offended at God. Like Job. That was ready to take God to court. <laughs> many of many are angry. They say, they say I'm not, I'm not, I will never Lord you see with what has happened. Who are you to strive with your maker? When God kills, no arrest. If God comes for you, there's nothing anybody can do. Never be offended at God. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You may go through a shaking right now. God has a plan. Never let God give you what you want. Tell him to give you what you need. Because what you want can destroy you. But what you need empowers you. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody? God has a plan. It's when you understand that you are in the whole of his hand, it gives you peace. Something happened some time back. I was, I was somewhere, I went to pray. Some people broke into the place. And I never knew they tracked me there. As they broke into the place, they bust the door. I, they told me to stand up. I prayed, I was lying on the bed. I stood up, I wore my clothes. They said, follow us. They were not masked. They were armed. They said, follow us. I was following them. I got to the reception. The receptionist was on the ground with a gun to the head. I saw some other people, the security man. I entered the car, I, was, I sat down. From their tonation, I knew they were not Nigerians because they were Africans, but there was a particular tribe, the country they come from. And they were talk, communicating. I sat down. I, one of them sat here, another sat, I sat at the middle, one sat here, one was driving. And I was very calm. I was just, they said, I said, where are we going? They said, keep quiet. I said, it's okay, it's good, let's go. After about five minutes, they say, who are you? Obviously, they don't even know me, so they were important because somebody didn't want to leave traces. I'm a man of God. They say, man of what? God. They say, what is that one? We know God. We know man. So which one is man of God? <laughs> I say, I'm a pastor. The guy applied the brick. You are what? A pastor. He said, I said it. I said, what? He said, everybody we, are, we carry before we kill them, they pee on themselves. He said, you are just calm. I said, of course, because I know you can't kill me. He said, you said what? Did you see what we are holding? I said, leave this thing. It's for human beings. You can't kill me. Ah. You are so confident. That's of course because I know God. He's in this car now. He's with us here. And one of them said to me, you are a pastor? I said, yes. And he said something. He's going to make you laugh. He said before he started this business, his late mother prayed for him. Business. This is killing his business. <laughs> and he, his late mother said to him, there are three people you must not touch. Number one, pastors. 
He said, because you touch them, their boss will come for you. Number two, orphans. You touch them, their boss will come for you. Number three, widows or widowers. He said, avoid them. He said, so even if I'm given any assignment, these three set of people, he said, please, you will leave this place. On Sunday, you will go to your church. You will do a Thanksgiving and dance. He said, we will send people there if you don't dance. I said, so what do we do? He said, we're taking you back. They took me back to where they picked me from, dropped me and apologized. But what am I picking out? The state of my heart, no shaking. Why? Because I was the offender. Oh Lord, why? No, I know he has the best for me. So I was just walking. I walked in there. I didn't pick, I, I didn't call nobody. I didn't, nothing. Even after I landed, I still didn't call my wife. Hey, I just escaped to, hey, uh-uh. Only wake up, thank God for me. Thank God for me. Thank God for me. Oh my God. Nah. Am I talking to somebody? Some things will happen. My wife said, why did you tell me? I said, so if I tell you now, if I tell you that thing now, your blood pressure goes up. You are worried. I said, no, I give you testimonies and victory. After I've come out of the battle, we'll discuss it. Am I talking to somebody here? Hey, never be offended in God. No matter what, listen. Listen to me. Even if you have lost anything, thank God you've not lost everything. You lost a marriage, you've not lost your life. You lost a job, you've not lost your health. Never celebrate what you've lost. Appreciate what you still have. Your heart. Your heart. Please, can I give you a counsel? Don't focus on the things you didn't get despite your prayers. Don't focus on those things that you never had despite how you pray. Focus on the things you got without praying. Never focus on the things that you lost despite your prayers. Focus on what you got. If there are things that God did without you praying. It just came. David had a good heart. A heart that was appreciative. A heart that was grateful to God. A heart that always knew that God has the final say. Never be offended. Never be offended in God, sir. Never be offended in God, man. Never be offended. Never be offended. Never be offended. A man had a son. That was, I mean, it took him about seven years to get that boy. At the age of two, the boy was sick and the boy died. And this man, after a while, came to church. While he was in church, every message being preached, his hand was on his jaw and was asking God, what kind of life is this? The wife would cry. At the end of the service, I said I wanted to see both of them and when they came I said sir God said you are angry with him he kept quiet I said God said you are not happy with him he kept quiet he said, how can I be happy with God I'm, 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 I'm. I'm fine I said no God said you are not happy and the wife said can, can you speak and say the truth he said what do you mean say the truth how can I be happy how can I be happy he told me say, he had built four churches he built this he built that he built that and God allowed his only son to die I said to him, who gave you power to build the church? Who gave you life to build those churches? Who gave you the baby? Who gave, who made you what you are? I said, don't be offended in God. And we prayed. Two months later, the wife got pregnant. And I speak to you, they have a set of triplet now. But first of all, God had to correct his mindset. There are many people who are just coming to church, not because they are excited. They have so many questions they want to ask God. So many questions. So many questions. Someone gave me a list long about 11 questions. Say, I should ask God and give him an answer. And the questions, I was scared. Terrible question. There are people like that who are asking God, Father, are you still alive? Did you kill him? Are you still on the throne? Did you dethrone him? There are people who are asking God, where are you? Yet he gave you bread. I refuse to be offended in God. Blessed is he that is not offended in me. A good heart is not offended. Number two, a good heart is thankful. On, you must learn gratitude. Gratitude is altitude. Gratitude is fortitude. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you must say, Lord, thank you. 
As you go to bed, Lord, thank you. Even while you are driving, just mutter those words into the atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him for life. Thank him for life. Only great fools are ungrateful. Only great fools are ungrateful. Thank him for life. Thank him in the morning. Thank him at noon. Thank him when the sun goes down. Thank him for keeping you alive. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your spouse. Thank him for what happened to you. Thank him for the battle. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What is the will of God? That you give thanks in everything. So no matter what you're going through, you thank him. No matter your experience, you thank him. No matter the high waters, you thank him. No matter the doctor's report, you thank him. No matter the pain, you thank him. Learn to be grateful. Learn to be grateful. Learn to be grateful. David was a man after God's heart because David knew how to be grateful. In Psalm 34, verse 1, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The Bible says, David said, Seven times a day will I thank him. Seven times a day will I praise him. David was a man of gratitude. David knew how to be appreciative. Thank him for life. Do you know last night there was a battle over your soul? There were forces that say you must not stand up from the bed. And there were forces that say no, let's swallow up in the night. But God arose for you and was your defense. Even when you were subconscious, he was your defense. Even when you were not awake and not aware. When there was a battle for your life, when the course of darkness said, this man must not rise up, God said, no, I am his glory. I am the lifter of his head. He cannot pass out like this. There are battles God fought for you, and you are not aware. There are deliverances you encountered, and you are not aware. Thank him for what he has done. Thank him for what you are not aware of. Thank him for the victories you can see. Thank him in the morning. Thank him at noon. Thank him when the sun goes down. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your finances. Even you don't have a job, still thank him. You don't have an apartment, thank him. You are looking for your documentation, thank him. When you listen, when you thank God for what you are expecting, you commit him. Oh Father, thank you for my PR. Thank you because you have done it. God hates to hold anybody. God, God hates to be indebted to man. He doesn't come. You are thanking him. Father, thank you because you have done it. So you commit him. You commit him. Father, I just thank you because these babies have come. I already have my babies. You commit him. Father, thank you because I have the best of jobs. You've done it. I know you have done it. You commit him. That's what happened. When Jesus lifted the bread, he needed to feed people. He said, Father, I thank you because thou hast heard me. Ah! You commit him when you thank him for what he hasn't done. He, you, you trigger him to do it. Don't complain. Thank him. It doesn't matter what happens to you in everything. Take your seat. Thank him. The second key Am I wasting your time, please? The second David key to greatness is the anointing. Hey, Yabasha, is the anointing. David was anointed thrice. Saul was anointed once. David was anointed three times. First Samuel 16, 13. He was anointed in the midst of his brethren. Second Samuel, second Samuel, second Kings rather, 2 verse 4. He was anointed as king over Judah. Second Kings 5 verse 2. He was anointed as king over all Israel. So David was anointed thrice. Saul was anointed just once. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. Just once. When, when Saul died, in Second Samuel 1 21, David said, Saul died! as a man that was not anointed with oil. In other words, you can't be anointed and expire cheaply. Once you are anointed, there is a preserve. There is power in the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing is the manifested presence of the Holy Ghost. The anointing is the bodily, tangible, feelable, seeable, holdable, touchable presence of God. The anointing is God. 
God in the flesh. The anointing is the practicality of God's workability. You must understand the anointing is the expression of divinity. The anointing is God unveiling himself. The anointing is the power of God. Am I speaking to someone here? You need the anointing of God. In Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, he says it shall come to pass in that day that the body shall be taken from off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You need the anointing of God in your life. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 27 this same anointing you have received teacheth you all things. For you need no man to teach you anything. You need the anointing. No king ever became a king or ascended the throne in Israel without the anointing. You need the anointing of God. The anointing of God is the expression of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Jesus was the greatest teacher. He was a rabbi by excellence. He was a teacher to teach us. He was one who spoke in parables, unveiled the mysteries of God. The disciples sat at his feet for three years and six months. So they were mobile encyclopedias because they sat at the, great, at the feet of the greatest teacher of all time. Yet Jesus said to them, please, I have taught you. Please, you have been groomed. Please, you have been cooked but tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued Luke 24 49 in other words no matter what you know no matter your experience no matter your expertise no matter your certificate no matter your degree tarry until you are endued with power you may have certificates you may have degree you may have training but without power I saw something very humorous. There was a young man, he had no job. He was a surgeon. He was a pediatrician. He was a psychiatrist. This guy was sound medically. When the hospitals are stranded, they have critical cases, they come to call him from the house. But nobody employs him. They will come and call him. They will hire the guy. He will go into the theater. Where, I mean, operation that is 50-50. He will sort everything. What's almost messed up, he will sort it out. Get his salt. He came to me by himself. I called a few doctors. I said, oh, This guy is good. I said, But why can't they say no? There's something about him that's not just right. But when it's about the job, he knows it. So this is not about certificate or expertise, it's power. You may have watched our services for two, two Sundays or last Sunday, I can't remember. A lady I prophesied on who has a PhD, has a master's degree. You may have seen that. When she goes for a job, she has to use a school living certificate because she's more qualified than the owners of the company. He says, ah, you are a risk. We can't, we can't hire you. So she has to drop all the degrees and pick one that is almost of no value and tender that. I said, God is telling me that people say you are too qualified to be employed. She said, yes. So I hide my PhDs. I hide all my top masters. There, are this, there, is a, there is a force at work. Without power, life is empty. Without power, life is boring. Life is barren. Life is weary. The anointing. What came upon David and it, it located the unprotected spot in Goliath's forehead? It was the anointing. It takes the anointing to advance and do what no one has done before. To get to the zenith and the apex of life, you need the anointing. Am I talking to someone here? And today, get ready! Because the anointing is coming upon you. Number three, and then I'll pray. The third key we saw in the life of David was David was... A, David, you want to hear this? David had a battle mentality. In this world, this is a world of battles. Is an error to be lily livered. No matter what you see, don't give up. Don't give up. Is there a crisis in your business? Fight it. Is there a crisis in your marriage? Fight it. Fight it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm so done. Like it's over. Like over. Like O to the V to the E to the arrow. I like hope. Fight it! Don't wear. Don't wear. Don't wear. Ah, the friend is late now. The wife will say, you made me angry. 
I will pack out. My friend said, if you make me angry, I will follow you. <laughs> so where? Yeah, that marriage cannot end though. Cannot end. Stay there and fight it. There's a trajectory in your home. Yeah, there, are, there, there, are, there are so many battles and crises in marriages. Stay there. Fight it. Face it. Am I talking to somebody? Don't give up. Let the problem give up. David fought 66 wars and won all. David was a fighter. It takes that mentality to advance in life. There are powers and forces waiting to see you give up. You will not give up. I say you will not give up. You will not give up. You will not give up. It takes courage to get to the height and depth of life. There are people today, just little shaking, they are crying. <laughs> they gave me query. Really? My husband has not eaten my food for two days. <laughs> Your husband has not seen you for two days. You have just been delivered from hard labor. And you are crying. <laughs> You've just been delivered. My children, I don't understand. No! When the devil came and attacked my son, I grabbed. The mother was weeping. I said, come, give me, give me my boy. The guy was almost passing out. I took the boy. Prayed in tongues in capital letters. Eject. I handed it back to the mother. I was going. He said, you'll be acting as if you are not a human being. I told my wife something yesterday. I said, when I saw it, I was worried. He said, you. You were worried. My husband, what is worry? Do you worry? I said, am I not a human being? He said, no, I, I've known you. Sometimes things will happen and I'm smiling. We've lost some people and I just... My wife, I look at her like she's suspecting me. <laughs> Say, don't you have emotions? I said, How do you mean? Cry, cry. Be broken, feel. I said, I do have emotions. I said, But it's not going to change anything. It won't bring them back. It won't change anything. And I like to frustrate the devil. You know, the devil gets mad when, with all he's doing, you are not shaking. It kills him. It kills him. We are in a certain African country and we are, sir, we are being driven. I spoke against <laughs> ah, Thank God. I'm, I'm grown up in those days. Ah, I was seated in the hotel. I was watching TV and I saw a man in that African country. He said, if you want to become a witch, you want to join witchcraft and wizardry, call this number. Yeah? Now, that was strange to me because they said it was normal to them, which is Openly, they say yes, it's legalized in that country. Call this number to be. I say, hey. I say, I don't understand. You mean they do this here? He said, no, it's, it's legal here. You don't speak against witchcraft. Anybody wants to be, it's okay. You can. They just see it like a craft. It's like going to the university, going to school. That's like normal. I said, okay. So, is it? You can't speak against it. I say, yes, yeah, okay. You may have read my book, That Witch Must Die. That was the, the service I preached it. So they were seated there. I said, I've been told that it's illegal to speak against that. I said, I said, the topic of my message is that which must die. As I was saying that, some top guys who were in front in government were leaving their seats. They said they, they don't want to be caught on camera violating the law with me. <laughs> and they left. As soon as I finished, we were walking to the hotel. I know the young guy was following. I'm coming after me. I turned. I said, why are you after me? Go back! As he was running, his, his pistol, his gun fell. So I knew it came for something. As my wife and I were going back in the car, a suicide bomber ran into our car. Our car began to turn. Boom, it was tumbling and tumbling. My wife heard me, Jesus, Jesus. I was quiet. Jesus. I said nothing. So when the car regained balance, my wife turned to me. I was replying text message. He said, my husband, my husband. I said, shh, don't let the devil feel important. Quiet, 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 quiet. He said, shh. Don't, don't, don't talk. Satan just wants to see our reaction. Let's make him mad. Let's make him mad. He says, so, are you okay? I said, we are okay. We are fine. We are okay. Nothing, nothing will happen to us. Don't worry. Let's just keep going. That is the mentality that you had a miscarriage and you are smiling. It kills the devil. They just give you a job and you are, you are smiling. Do you know, sir, there's a confidence you carry into an interview setting. 
and the panel is confused. You go there well dressed. First of all, you embarrass them with accolades. Good morning. Nice. You look good, sir. Nice shoes. I like your smile. You're like, ah-ah. You lavish them with accolades. So you look good. You look nice. Wow. Wonderful place. Nice ambience. This place is so peaceful, so serene. You sit down and they ask you a question. They say, thank you for that. I appreciate that question. It came from the depth of concern. <laughs> ah! I know someone has got there already defeated. You, his appearance alone is not employable. <laughs> Good morning, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry I came two minutes late. Nobody asked him. <laughs> I'm sorry I came two minutes late. Please help me. <laughs> ah! Confident. A confident man is a competent man. A confident man is a competent man. Be battle ready. Life does not give you what you deserve. It gives you what you demand. You can pray your breakthrough down. You can pray your success down. You can pray your favor down. So no matter what you're going through, be battle ready. You can pray down. God, without me, tell somebody, don't give up. Your problems will give up. Don't give up. Your mountains will give up. Don't give up. Your battles will give up. Don't give up. The hardship will give up. It may be the doctors gave you a medical report. Don't believe that lie of the devil. You don't have cancer. You don't have tumor. Maybe they said your tubes are blocked. They say you can't have a baby. I say you are going to have more babies than you think. Uh, you can even have seven babies if you want. You say, Apostle, what am I doing with seven babies? What name am I going to call them? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. God can give you a miracle. God can give you a testimony. No man has the final say. He that is from above is above all. He says, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait in my church call. I will not give up. Job 13, 15. Even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will maintain my ways before God. I don't give up. Your problems will give up. Be upstanding. Let me pray with you. Be upstanding. First of all, we are going to pray for the anointing. Lord, I need the anointing. The anointing is the empowerment of the spirit. The anointing gets things done cheaply. I need the anointing. Man of God in this place, pastor say you don't need the church hall, you need anointing. You don't need church space, you need anointing. When the anointing comes, one person can buy you a church space. One person. What you need is the anointing. When things happen practical, oh, you don't understand. You don't understand. It's the anointing you need. You are struggling because you are bankrupt of the oil of God. When there is buoyancy of oil, everything lines up, falls in place. You need the anointing. For that marriage, you need the anointing. That business, you need the anointing. That's what you need. Is the anointing, no? Is the anointing. anointing. There are things I can say to you. Is the anointing. Is the anointing. You will cry to God, Lord, I need the anointing. In any facet or department of your life, your finances, your marriage, your home, your health, your business. I need the anointing. I need the anointing. Say in the name of Jesus. Say my father, my father. In the name of Jesus. As I pray. I need the anointing. Let it come upon me. Open your mouth and fire prayers. Ah, kaparada shaga. Raga, 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 ra
la kosha kapara tiata dela Shadada, shada, ya kapa kapara da basokata. In Jesus' name. Hey. Wait, we are going to repeat that prayer. Who is Nicholas? Is there someone by that name? Kyoko, 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 Nicholas Kyoko. Is that your name? Are you sure? Lift your hands. Musioki. Yes. Is that your last name? That's my given what, name. What does it mean? It means like to, to go back. To go back. Yes. That's where your problem is coming from. Sir, in the realms of the spirit, I saw the Lord take this night is serious, please. I saw the Lord showing me suddenly a door was shut and it's like you are trapped. And God Almighty, by his power, wants to bring you out of that trap. Can I, can I explain in the language you understand? Yes, please. I saw a crisis. I don't think, I'll tell you. I saw a crisis. A problem, you met a lady. Yes. Okay, you understand now. Yeah. You met a lady, but there's, it, has, it has splitted and parted. Yes. Something happened in that marriage. Yes. And it was a mess. Yes. You lost a lot in that home. And it happened and, and, and everyone has moved on. Yes. But now you are thinking, should I marry again? Yes. Should I marry again? Because of all that has happened to me. You are scared of marriage. Yes. Very scared. And people are saying, why, why not you give it a second chance? You say, no, no, no. I went through a lot. But God says, I should tell you, put the past behind. Because this year, God wants to make you happy. And heaven will make you happy. A prophecy for one is a prophecy for all. Heaven will make you happy. And God says he will restore you. He's going to restore you. He's going to restore you. And all that you have lost, you will get them back. Your time has come. In the name of Jesus. Who is Bazaar? Bazaar. Familiar, familiar. Bazaar. If, that, if that's your name, I want to see you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Eya. 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 Tino so bradasha. Tiko so bradasha. Are you ready? We're going to repeat that prayer. There's so much, so much God is about to do now. So much, so much, so much, so much, so much. Someone is being prepared for us. They're prepping you for surgery. 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 something like Isabel. Is that your name? Yes, sir. Do you want to do it? Come. God is, is doing it by himself. Yeah. Who is she to you? Your daughter, come. Come yes. this way. The hand of God is mighty. Who is Mitchell? Matthias. Matthias. Mitchell. Whoever is by that name or you know someone by that name, please come. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Mitchell, Matthias. Don't waste my time. Come, come, come. Please. You 
don't need to fear. I saw a letter T. Tonia. What's your name? Tonia. Please, as I'm speaking to anyone and I hear a case about you, I mention it. You can come from wherever you are. If I mention it about you, you can come. Now, the heavens are open. A scholarship is coming to your house, madam. And the miracle that God gives. Grace. Grace. Let the anointing fall upon me. Let the anointing fall upon me. Let the anointing fall upon me. Open your mouth. We're going to take a second and final prayer now. And then I'll begin to minister to you. There is an anointing and a spirit of victory that no matter what the battles you fight, the Bible calls it the first John 5, verse 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Many, no matter the battles of life, there's a victory that overcomes the world. And as that victory that overcomes the world falls on you, no matter the intensity of that battle, you will win. Say, my father, my father, my father, my father, shout it louder than that. My father, my father, shout it louder than that. My father, my father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, as I pray, as I pray, the victory that overcome the world, the victory that overcome the world, fall on me, fall on me, open your mouth and fall. Sapparaka, 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 S
Blessed be your name. Can you lift your hands to heaven? There are 16 people the Lord just whispered to me. Right now. See the anointing that makes life easy is coming upon you. The anointing that makes life easier is coming. Spirit of God, find them. Find them. One! Come! Take it! Jesus! Jesus! Power! The anointing that makes life easy. Right now, right now. For your, for your marriage. I, I see seven people in their wedding gown. God say your settlement. The yoke of delay in marriage is broken. The Lord visits you. Oh! Alaba, brother, come. Brother, brother, come. Are you here alone? Say again. Of 
God. You are the program of God. And I want to speak empowerment. And the Lord shall help you. Suddenly. Suddenly. By the counsel of God, Father, this will stand. This is the plan of God. And I bless you. Touch! Richard, who is Richard around here? Is that your name? Come, Globras, Centivras, Shadavas. People have come not unto a man but unto God. People have come from different parts. We are those from Ottawa. We are those from Ottawa. Come, line up here. You're from Ottawa. Line up here. I should pray for those from Ottawa. Line up here. Those I called out by names, step, step aside. Those I called out by names. Those I called out by names, step aside. More than my mouth can testify. somebody there are two people that are holding you one on the left on the right and they want to swallow you up they have made themselves enemies of your life one of them is called Paul another is called Trevor Trevor and Paul they are contending you and there is a serious contest for your life God wants to give you victory God wants to give you victory God wants to give you victory 
God wants to give you victory. Because this person I'm talking about, in your family, there's someone called Natalie. I don't know who Natalie is. There's someone else called Isabel. And God is saying, by the force of grace, there's a preservation coming upon your life. Those who are scavenging for your life and your soul, they will not find you. Close wombs are open. And God is giving you a miracle. God is giving you a miracle. Marriages are healed. 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 There's a lady, your daughter has issues with you. Listen to this. Your daughter has blocked you on phone. Blocked your numbers. Blocked access. She doesn't want to talk to you. I'm talking of your biological daughter. And she doesn't want to talk to you. She doesn't want to see you. And there's a crisis right now. Um, the Lord is touching your daughter's heart. The heart of a king is in the palm. If I say anything concerning you, walk out of your seat and come stand here. Don't waste my time. The Lord is saying the heart of a king is in the palm of the Lord. Ma, are you working out or not? Don't raise your hand by your seat. I don't have time. The heart of a king is in the palm of the Lord. And I decree peace in your home. is shattered by the mercies of God you and all your family members free in Jesus name I'm praying for four categories of people those who are heavily indebted you are indebted you have so much debts around you D-E-B-T so much debts around you raise your right hand right now I speak debt cancellations oh my god debt cancellations God give you a testimony in the name of Jesus. Someone has been healed of sugar diabetes. Stand up. 
Receive a living sacrifice. I am There's a little baby. I want to pray. It's a baby. Come. I'm asking the Lord to preserve the child. is coming. Good news is coming. You shall be suddenly hurt. You shall be suddenly hurt. In the name of Jesus. It's a new season. Do you, believe, you believe the Lord has taught him, doesn't it? You believe? It's done. Who is John? Who is John? I said the Lord will preserve him. He that digs a picture fall into it. The Lord will preserve him. And the Lord will preserve everyone under the sound of my voice. God did something very, very outstanding for a man called Joseph in the Bible. When the Lord brought him out of prison. In 12 hours, God gave him five miracles. The first was God brought him out of prison. That was divine relocation. The second, the Bible says, and he was cleaned up and was brought before Pharaoh. That was divine acceptance. And the third thing the Lord did, he was given a horse. He rode on a horse. That was divine speed. Pharaoh gave him his own signet ring. That was divine authority. And Pharaoh gave him his daughter to marry. That was divine help. So therefore, on the platform and the premise of that, I make this declaration on everyone who believes that in the next 12 hours, five, five miracles. For everyone, Lord, wherever they come from, in the next 12 hours, five, five miracles! In the name Jesus. We call them forth. We call them forth. We call them forth. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. The other comes. I saw a lady standing with you. Where's, she? Where's your wife? She's here. Go get her. Go get her. Am I embarrassing? There's a baby that she's expecting. Oh. I prayed for you in the morning and again in the evening. <laughs>